hello and wow what a what a crazy week uh, you know I have to obviously record this before you see the video and time has to pass in between so that I can clip everything together so I'm not gonna say anything too specific right now other than uh, what I'm seeing from a lot of other folks who have been active in the lead up to this is that right now uh, you know everyone's stressed out it's very uncertain uh, and you, you should probably just take a moment and try to relax, try to breathe, try to get rid of that stress and everything like that. Uh, so we're just going to kind of go right into this video about Raspberry Pi, Eurorack, and firmware. I mean, I'm not sure if there's anything more exciting out there, really. And then if you need just a little bit more concentrated stress relief, you know, if you remember back to when you were a kid, your adult uh, probably told you if you're having trouble falling asleep, try counting some sheep, you know, just count sheep. And that, I think, you know, counting is a very mindful activity. It really gets you to concentrate on the here and now and absolutes, numbers. So I think, you know, counting could be a great, great way to cope right now. So just a little simple counting. One, two, three, four. This is Pamela's new workout, or PAMS for short. It's a sequencer, it's a clock source, it's a waveform generator, it gives your modules quite the workout, basically. It's made by Alm Busy Circuits, and they have a new firmware for PAMS that includes a new waveform, a smooth, random waveform. Should be great for generating melodies, which I'm really into with my synth stuff. So I'm going to install this new firmware, but I'm going to try doing it with a Raspberry Pi. Alm has documentation on updating the firmware for their modules, and you can use Windows, Mac OS, or Linux, but I'm pretty sure they envisioned a full desktop Linux machine, not a single board computer. Uh, the Windows instructions are spicy, and I am lazy. Uh, I also don't have a Mac, and the Linux instructions are the easiest, uh, with one single line in the terminal. Um, my desktop Ubuntu install had to give way to a second Windows install for my day job, so that's why I'm going to see if the Pi can handle it out of pure laziness. As I always say, you know, take chances, make mistakes, and cause a kernel panic. I'll be using a Pi 4, 4 GB of RAM with the latest build of Raspberry Pi OS, which is currently 32-bit. Also, what else am I supposed to do on a rainy Thursday afternoon in the middle of a pandemic? PAMS uses an STM32 for its brains, so for upgrade you use DFU util. For Linux, Alm specifies that it's included in your build, but I found it was not included in Raspberry Pi OS. That's okay though, you just run sudo apt-get install dfu-util and you're in business. However, I, I found this to be possibly a bad omen. Next, I download PAMS latest firmware to the Pi, in this case that's firmware 207, and then plugged in PAMS to the Pi with a USB cable. At this point, I got even a little more nervous because the Pi didn't seem to see any USB device, aka PAMS didn't show up. It was like plugging into the void. I plugged PAMS into my Windows machine, check to make sure the USB cable was transferring data. It did show up as an STM bootloader, so I couldn't blame the cable. I rebooted the Pi, tried again, and if PAMS was getting physical, a connection that is, it was hidden from me. I decided to take a chance and enter the line specified in the manual into the Pi's terminal. Worst case, if PAMS wasn't actually connected, then nothing would happen. To my surprise, uh, it did run as intended though. I was skeptical at best, but there was only one way to see if the new waveform was now in PAMS arsenal. After powering PAMS back up and navigating to the waveforms, Sure enough, there was that new, smooth, random waveform. To make triple sure, I power cycled PAMS again while holding down select, and sure enough, firmware 207 was showing. It seems that Pi can be a part of a healthy, updated workout routine. So yeah, it worked. Sweet. Uh, to be fair, I was pretty sure it would work, but you know, I wasn't 100% sure because you know I have run into issues before trying to do tasks like that on a Raspberry Pi that would maybe be more like standardized for a Linux full desktop, um, mainly because, you know, Raspberry Pi OS, formerly Raspbian, it's still official release is 32-bit. Now, I know 64-bit is brewing in the background, there's beta releases and everything, 
uh, not quite ready to go to 64-bit yet beyond experimentation. But I think this method of using a Pi to update PAMs uh, is definitely a, a good option, especially when you look at the scary Windows steps that personally I, I just didn't want to deal with. Um, and like Mac OS definitely seems like it's a little bit more approachable, uh, but you would have to have a Mac, um, and also, which I don't. Uh, and also, uh, there are some notes there depending on which uh, OS build you're on, like there might be some different steps. So that can be a lot to deal with. So because of that, I think, you know, grabbing a Pi, putting the default OS on here, uh, installing DFU util, and then running that one line command in the terminal, and then you're done, like, I think that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty good. It's a nice, simple alternative. I do want to note that Alm Busy Circuits on their YouTube page does have step-by-step uh, -step videos for doing the Windows and Mac uh, firmware updates for their modules. Just throwing that out there. So it, it's it's totally possible. I'm not saying it's impossible. That's not the point of this video. I'm just lazy. You're probably lazy. This, for me, seemed like the easiest way to accomplish that upgrade. But one question remains. How does that sweet, smooth, random waveform react in a patch? Let's have Pams play us out. Okay, so we've got a really simple patch going on right now where Pams is sending out a random waveform to Tune, which is a 2HP module that uh, quantizes. Basically, Tune's a waveform coming out here to uh, kind of western scale notes, um, and then that goes out to the 1V oct input on plates, which is an oscillator. 1V oct is basically how you get notes into an oscillator. Uh, and then we have another output from PAMS, just a square wave uh, going into level on plates, which is kind of like a nice, like, smooth way to trigger things. So, like, if I unplug this, it's just on, whereas this breaks up a bit. So this is the old random waveform, so you can hear it's really choppy, like da, da, hit, 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 hit. Um, so I'm gonna now change it to the new smooth waveform. You can hear you getting a little bit more kind of musical quality to it, I think at least. Now if we take another trigger from Pam's, put it into morph. There you go. I have this other module from AI. It was a kit that um, basically attenuates your uh, Euro rack uh, signals to guitar pedal signals and then brings it back in. Uh, so that way I can use guitar pedals that are slightly off screen right now. Let me pan a little. Uh, I mainly use my delay pedal and uh, Alexander FX Syntax Error uh, and sometimes Marshmallow. So that's what I tend to use with my module. So I'm gonna turn on the delay pedal now. Just add some nice depth. Like I said, really simple patch, just kind of plug things in stock. I did change um, the level of the simple, uh, of the smooth waveform to 14% as the max and zero as MIM. So it's, it's a little bit lower in pitch, but that's just kind of a preference thing for me. Um, but yeah, excited about this.